Before we start the video, I want to address this channel's change directly. I have been reading the comments, and it seems like people really want this, so I will be trying out showing text visibly on the screen during the video. Recently, I have added closed captions to not take away from the original channel's podcasting aesthetic, but it seems that this format is still more popular, so I will be trying it out. If you want this format to stay, then be sure to like the video to show your support, or comment below your thoughts on the channel's direction. Now, let's begin. Sit down and buckle up, buckos. Keep your pearls ready and nearby the clutch, because today we hear the tale of Grunkalina. This is a slow burn, so bear with me and every chair slash broken table that piles onto the growing bonfire. So Grunkalina is the main character of this story, just as she would claim she was in every campaign, entirely due to the forceful wishing of her party, she assured. Was Grunkalina ever in a game I ran? Absolutely not. Was she a curse set upon my life, sent directly to punish me for my sins? Certainly. Today's story takes place and starts in the heart and home that we know as RPG Horror Stories own Discord. Names are of course changed to help keep identities private. We often see influxes of new members, and the day Gronkalina joined wasn't unlike any other. We said hellos, things were fine. At least, we thought they were fine. Why wouldn't they be? How foolish we were. Naivete? clouded our pitiful lives. Nothing was fine, because we were so wrong. Minutes in, and we began to learn the error of our ways. Something wasn't to Grunkalina's taste, like in D&D. Garbage, she said. Your own personal views? Stupid, she said. Repeated as necessary until all opposing views were yelled over. She didn't like people that weren't her, you see. Why did she join the group? To cause mass suffering, I assume. Only but a tip of the buttberg, however. She had been in the group for maybe a couple of hours, just telling people that they were wrong. Enough to throw in the towel and take a break, right? No, it was her first day, and she still hadn't consumed enough souls for the night. She must feed on others she considers beneath herself, which was all of us. We knew things were getting weird. The odd comments she dropped spoke volumes, but we didn't want to judge right away. Some of us knew when we'd see her decide to personally slight each of us when the chance arose. Sometimes it was just what she felt like sharing. I'm ashamed. I derailed and destroyed so many. We show visible confusion. What does she mean? She can't, I've hijacked many campaigns. She does. She does mean what we think she means. But we need to know. We have to ask. In what way? Ended up being the big bad. Interesting and concerning. I've always worked it with thread owners. Like a legitimate, you're not doing it correctly. Let me. Well, all right then. It must not have been that bad if it's okay with the GM, right? Right? We move on. Or rather, we tried. Grunkalina could sense we messed up. And it was required that we learn how much. Crom's lore had hopped into the beginner help channel to ask advice. A great idea, one might think. Knowledge is power. We all want to help. At least, we thought we all wanted to help. Not Grunkalina. Grunkalina wanted to poop on someone that day. Having asked for his help and brought up a game idea for his players, which involved cheese, Grunkalina had a single question for Kromslor. Are you out of your mind? No one really thought much of it. It's just a silly comment, right? Right? Wrong. We're stupid. We cannot see the 4D chess Grunkalina is playing. She continues, This whole discussion is stupid and childish. She tells us we must move the discussion of ideas away from the chat that is designed for them because she cannot fathom anyone running a game that isn't to her taste. That the ideas aren't on topic 
because they aren't serious enough. She's not playing the game, of course, but she will not stand for something different. That's just wrong. And we were wrong. Here, first on topic message in like two hours. Don't do dumb stuff for the random lulls that will get you on the sub. Are the players enjoying the game? I've been told that I DM with the energy of pure chaos that makes every session feel special and extra fun. Doubt. Try not to go too overboard and maintain communication with your players. Absolutely, I always put players' enjoyment first. Or stop playing with 5th graders. I'm 22 and everyone I play with is also about that age or older. Not mentally, obviously. Grunkalina continued to poop on people until the mod stepped in and called for her to stop. That was warning number one of the day. Yes, the first. Grunkalina was doing us justice by telling us how terrible we were. Another campaign idea came up elsewhere that disgusted Grunkalina. Ghosts. She gave it one read and declared that if she were to be a player, she'd get up and walk from the table because it was too absurd to have ghosts in a game. Can you imagine ghosts with my owlbears and elves? Disgusting. And as she said, gross. She started to digress into trying to vaguely insult people and the mods caught it yet again, giving warning number two. During the warning, she continued to call the above ideas stupid because we were too mentally lacking to understand how right she was. Obviously, we are brain dead, and she is the last bastion of hope for humanity. Our savior, a guiding light in the darkness. The first day had ended. We could breathe. We had survived with only a few casualties. Opening up a little bit more, she began to regale us with the tales of how much of a party mom she is. No, not the drinking kind. The kind that, when a party of adventurers would adventure, she was there, momming for them. And you see, this is where she mentions how unfortunate she is to be forced by all her player companions to become the main character of nearly every game she plays in. They just force her to take the leading role, and they chant how she's the party mom. What a story. Remember how she said she was also the big bad in the majority of her games too? No odd vibes coming from that at all. She mentions it again when no one reacted before about just how great it is party momming. So fun, she describes it. Still not odd. Nope. She goes on to be a hypocrite by saying that her one and only rule is having fun. Of course, when the previous topic in Beginner Help brought up how Kromsler's players were having fun, that was wrong because it wasn't her kind of fun. Duh. How could we be so stupid? She's the party mom, guys. She knows what fun players are allowed to do today. She always knows because it's what she thinks is fun. Conversation shifts. Days pass. People bring up their favorite races to play. Obviously, if you do not play anything with fur or scales, you are wrong. She explains as much. We are wrong again. She describes how playing human or dwarves or elves is wrong. It's boring. And she would rather gag on utensils, she says. You don't like sports yourself? You may be catching on at this point. You're wrong. Sports are godly. And if you don't like them, you are wrong. Time to insult people yet again that they aren't fun like she is. The party mom. The maker of fun. She just told you your opinion, and if you mention having a thought of any kind at all, she'll tell you no one wants to hear it. She will roll her emoji eyes at you, because you are too stupid to realize you are wrong. Stop being wrong, and you would not be punished. Crow comes by to talk about his city, 
and she helps us to see the light. She, having never been there, declares what the city is actually like to the very local that she is speaking to, and tells Crow the truth. He obviously doesn't know, for he is too stupid and she is too smart. She understands all, and has watched a YouTube video on the topic, thus confirming her as the only expert on the planet. We know nothing. We bow at her superiority. Only she can recreate history and geography in a single sentence. She must be a holy being. It was, after this, that out of nowhere, she dropped the line, I don't apologize for poop. Weird way of saying you're a massive jerk, but okay. She's gone a few days without directly pooping on anyone. It's nice. It seems like the warnings really helped to correct her behavior. Perhaps she's learning and no, the massive butt bird resurfaces yet again. I was discussing my non-magical reflavoring of 5e to match modern based games, where magic for classes still exists. They are just rewritten to match the current technology of the desired setting. A fireball is a grenade, and so on. Simple. Others and myself were talking about how it worked and how we all hated the idea of others just snipping magic out of 5e and calling it a day. Grunkalina's different opinion nerve is struck. She must speak up. <coughs> you, uh, do a lot of mirror gazing then, mate. Grunkalina thinks she is funny and is showing me how stupid I am. She tries to say that I was snipping magic out, among other untrue claims, just so I could be wrong. She claims that you can't reword magic at all. That's impossible and wrong. I must be because I am not Grunkalina, and only Grunkalina can ever be right. Grunkalina is not prepared for how much I was ready for her to start poop. I call her out and talk about how all her comments up until that point have been purely antagonistic and cruel, just like she is. Others immediately join in too, bringing up how she apparently did not read any prior conversation. Deacon tells her how she must be in the same category as a self-confessed sock puppet troll. Error. Reaction not found. She immediately calls for the moderators. More people join in. They call for the rudeness to stop. Both me and her. Fair. I was out to cause damage, just as she was. We should both bear witness to the staff's ruling. Grunkalina claims she is not being rude at all. No one agrees with her. Grunkalina claims how she's being victimized. She says she's irritated that she has to agree with me, or I put on my angry pants. I don't even need to speak anymore. People explain that no, it's not about agreeing. It's about her being an absolute jerk to everyone and then crying wolf if they call her out on her soul-sucking parasitic endeavors. They ask for her to just be civil. She ignores it and claims she's not a sanity leech. People assure her that she is. Mods discuss muting her, but she gleefully exclaims that it doesn't work. Warning number three, waxes and wanes. Retreating for a bit and licking her wounds for the week, Grungalina tries to go on the down low for a bit, but cannot help herself. She immediately starts to fight with someone else because they don't agree with her. We all must have on our angry pants, it seems, because no one can get along with her. Perhaps it's because we're all too stupid to understand or converse with her. Peasants beneath her genius. We are scum. How terrible it is to live such a terrible existence. People are, at that time in chat, and discussing their disabilities. They are calmly talking about what shortcomings they have, and sharing in their struggles in a constructive manner. Everyone is accepting, and kind, and generous. Grunkalina thinks it's the perfect time to drop. 
this is rapidly devolving into a pity party. The mods have had enough of her dismissing others' lives and experiences, and Grunkalina is immediately kicked. Happy server noises. Everyone congratulates the mods and thanks them for getting rid of the gremlin. Deacon has been collecting evidence on every horrible conversation she started, and it was condemning. We feel peace. The thanks continue on for almost an hour. Grunkalina rejoins mid-celebration. She says nothing. Finally, the bottomless pit of antagonism has found a plug, and it turns out that the item that was needed was Humble Pie. Karma exists. It takes a bit, but Grunkalina speaks again to, this time, poop on what she considers as fake moral support. She does not like it when she makes a self-shaming comment in public and someone says something nice. How dare someone try to be kind? That's wrong. But it's totally acceptable to put someone in an awkward position by saying inappropriate comments to a stranger. Yet again, the world cannot keep up with her intelligence because they just continue to be stupid and wrong. Having sucked life from that topic, she returned to disabilities. As it turns out, she has some of her own, and this time she feels like talking about it without being rude. Maybe it's because she's finally the center of this conversation. Obviously, it's a crime against humanity to exist outside her bubble. This must be why she thought it was acceptable to poop on other disabled people. She just couldn't figure out how to shoehorn herself in that conversation. Don't get me wrong, talking about mental health is important, but it was very apparent that she didn't give a care about others' mental health. After being previously kicked, Grunkalina semi-returned to normal. She mentions being a party mom, and how she knows many things, and that they are often the right things. We are wrong. Fortunately, she's not directly pooping on people, and life is great. She's made progress to literally say, you're wrong, but valid opinion. It's around maybe three weeks into joining the server that she tries to change her name and picture to pretend to be someone else. But knowing exactly how she acts, everyone immediately catches on. Eventually, a topic of Fallout comes up. Some of us like the games, but don't love them. This makes Roncalina angry. She calls our 6 out of 10 or 7 out of 10 ratings with a calm discussion as unfair hatred and our reasons not very strong. Because, you know, we aren't allowed to have varying tastes or opinions or lives. We are shadows to Grunkalina and we exist only for her. She drops from the conversation only to occasionally inject how she says she can't have an opinion or she'll get another kick or warning and how unfair it is. She adds what she thinks we rabbit fanboys are alike and that we must hate Bethesda because it's cool because there is no other option. Regardless of us never claiming any such thing of a relationship, she pretends to take things in stride returning again to any topic to insert how much of a party mom she is. She's just such a partier and a mom. Not a literal mother, just party mom. Teehee. It was at this time that it was very apparent to everyone that Grunkalina was a My Little Pony furry. Nothing wrong about being a furry. Like what you like. Grunkalina, however, had an issue with one horror story involving furries. Someone had a furry make them uncomfortable. Grunkalina claimed that being a furry had nothing to do with it, that that guy's story was just being awful, which is true. Her argument was the color of the shirt doesn't reflect on the person and that no one deserves to be punished for the color of their shirt. Great, we all agree. No more than 10 minutes later, 
someone else brings up a new horror story. This time, the horror story involves a fandom Gruncalina doesn't like. She says how the color of the shirt of that person is awful, and that person should be punished for liking something she doesn't. She demands that they be taken out in-game as punishment. The hypocrisy is brought up to her. She doubles down and claims that they deserve it for having such bad taste. She claims it's not the same thing as her fandom is obviously more important and tragic and that people are making up things to attack her because she's just such a victim. People move on, we try to forget. Everyone is getting sick of her endless poop. It hasn't even been a full month and no one wants to include her in conversations because she just shoehorns herself in to be a parasitic flesh devourer. She then makes the innocuous comment, I'm pretty genial, nice, and tend to be quiet. Now this is a lie if I've ever seen one. I say no words, only emotions as I quote her with a shocked Pikachu face. She doesn't reply. The conversation shifts to someone discussing a horror story they were in that involves forceful encounters. The speaker was obviously highly uncomfortable in the game when it was played and was new to the group and just trying to share. But Gronkolina thought it was the perfect time to try and assert how right she was. She told the new guy how his inaction was wrong and how he should have stopped it in the game and that he was right behind the one who forced themselves upon someone in the scale of blame. How dare he be in an uncomfortable situation and be terrified and horrified? How dare he? He should have known better than to exist and have feelings of his own. I call her out for horrible victim blaming and the cracks up here. Deacon has, at this time, already piled on evidence after evidence to the mods of her behavior. She fake agrees, then jumps to trying to call me out for not putting up with her poop. How awful it is that I am a rock that will not move. She resorts to name calling. During her new rampage, she snaps at the new guy that she was previously blaming and staff sees, the straw that broke the demon camel's back. There are merely seconds left before the end. The response is quick. I don't think she felt any pain. People weren't even aware that it happened until they heard whispers of it in passing, inklings of the final moments, that Gruncalina was finally banished back to the bottomless abyss, where it's believed she's still lording over as the big bad main character party mom. The only rule is that everyone needs to be having her definition of fun, obviously. So yeah, not your typical RPG horror story, but one nonetheless. Gronkalina is just the worst. You have to be to resort to victim blaming. Gronkalina will probably never change, but the Discord does not need that toxicity. Speaking of which, don't forget that we have a Discord where you can chat about RPG stuff and whatnot. But anywho, what do you all think about this situation?